Let's talk about batteries. There's a couple of things you need to know about batteries. First of all, they're heavy, they're bulky, and they don't hold nearly as much energy as a gallon of gasoline does. That's why traditionally electric vehicles have a shorter range per charge than a gasoline vehicle does per tank of fuel. Now, when I'm talking about batteries here, I'm going to be talking exclusively about lead acid batteries, but even in lead acid batteries, there's a number of different types. I wanted to make this project on budget and using as many off the shelf parts as I possibly could. Now, if you've got the budget for lithium ion batteries, fantastic, go get yourself a set. Uh, the main concerns is, are that you're going to need a little bit different battery charger for lithium ion batteries. For this project, we're sticking with lead acid. And even with lead acid, there's a couple different types. In front of me is a 12 volt flooded battery. And then in a minute, we'll take a look at sealed batteries, gel batteries, and AGMs. And then I'll show you what I used on my motorcycle and why I chose that. Now to start with, on this battery, this is just a plain off the shelf marine battery. It is a flooded battery and it's 12 volts. It's very similar to what runs a lot of golf carts, except those are usually six volts. By using 12 volt batteries, uh, we can get to a higher system voltage in our motorcycle more quickly. With just four batteries in series, we can be at 48 volts. If we were using six volt batteries, we would need eight of them instead of just four, and we don't have room for that on the motorcycle. Now we actually could use six, six volt batteries if the motorcycle had a larger frame. On the other hand, uh, if we had that extra space, by using 12 volt batteries, we could get double our system voltage. Now, in a flooded battery, it's literally flooded. If you shake it, you can hear battery acid sloshing around in there. Now, that's not gonna be a good type of a battery to have on an electric motorcycle, because since it only has two wheels, at some point, chances are pretty good that the motorcycle's gonna tip over, whether intentionally or not. And with a motorcycle tipped over, battery acid will be able to come out these ports on the top of here. That's not gonna be good for anybody. So I very strongly suggest not using flooded batteries in an electric motorcycle. They're great on things like electric pickup trucks. Uh, let's take a look at some of the specs on here. On the front here, I see this is a Farm and Fleet brand battery. Um, it's actually manufactured by Johnson Controls. I'm in the greater Milwaukee area, so that's actually a local company, so that's sort of a bonus. And on the front here, I see that it's marked as being a 24M DC with 550 cold cranking amps. Uh, the indicator of 24 means that this is a group 24 battery. Uh, that's just a naming convention. Uh, a group 24 is a specific length, height, and depth of battery. Uh, that's fairly common for automotive use. And then the 550 cold cranking amps means how much amperage can you get out of this battery when it's just sitting there cold? Uh, in general, the higher that number is, the better a battery like this would be for um, starting a gasoline engine, for pulling a lot of amps through that 12 volt starter. Now, we're not using an engine, we're just using a motor directly. So the higher that cold cranking amps number is, the better in terms of good acceleration on an electric motorcycle. Now, if we look on the top here, we're gonna see some other markings. Looking right here again, I see it's a, a group 24 battery. It's 550 cold cranking amps. And then also, I see that it says it's 140 RC, or reserve capacity. Uh, reserve capacity is sort of a number used for uh, like trolling motors, that sort of a thing. If you only pull a certain amount of juice out of this battery, uh, how many minutes is it going to run? So a higher reserve capacity number is generally a good thing, although it doesn't necessarily directly correlate in electric vehicle use. Now another important number here is amp hours. In this case, it's 95 amp hours. You can think of amp hours as the capacity of the battery, just like a, a fuel tank might be measured in gallons, uh, how many gallons of gas a fuel tank can hold. A battery is uh, marked in amp hours. So 95 amp hours, that's pretty good. That's a, a fair amount of energy. Um, in theory, we could pull one amp out of this battery for 95 hours. Um, alternatively, we couldn't pull 95 amps out of this battery for one hour straight through. And the reason for that is when you pull more amperage faster out of a battery, you're not going to get that same total amount of energy out of the batteries. So in general, you wanna minimize your amperage use as much as you can. 
because that's going to maximize your range on an electric vehicle. Now a couple other things that we can look at on here are the terminals themselves on these batteries. Uh, if I pull off the covers here, you can see that we have automotive posts. Um, automotive posts are nice in that uh, they're big, they're solid, they're pretty easy to clamp onto. They're, they're common for, car, for use in cars. Uh, in terms of use for electric vehicles, I don't love that type of connector because the clamp that goes around there is it's kind of bulky, it's an awkward shape. If you have to take it on and off quite a bit, um, it's a little bit of a hassle. Now on the other hand, on this battery, we also have uh, these wing nuts going onto these threaded posts. Threaded posts are pretty nice to work with for electric vehicles. Um, you can e easily put a battery cable straight onto there and then you tighten down with a washer and nut on top. Now of course for a permanent installation we would not be using a wing nut. Um, the other thing is that since there's two different terminals on this battery, that's kind of nice because we could put our main power to the automotive lug and then other things like uh, uh, a voltmeter or the battery charger, anything else that needs to go to the battery could go to that threaded lug instead. So uh, overall, that, this combination is actually kind of nice to have. And then on top, you can also see these are the covers for where we add water. Uh, you only ever want to add distilled water to a flooded battery. Uh, one of the other advantages of flooded batteries is they're very forgiving. For example, if you overcharge it, what's going to happen is it's going to boil off some of the electrolyte. All you have to do is uh, just add a little bit of uh, distilled water and charge it back up again and usually they're fine. Some other batteries are a little bit less forgiving when it comes to overcharging. For example, gels. So let's take a look at a gel battery. Now here we have a different battery. This one is a gel. This happens to be a DECA Dominator. It's made by East Penn Manufacturing out in uh, Pennsylvania. This is an American-made battery. Um, you'll notice it's a little bit bigger. This is a Group 31 battery. Um, the main thing to remember is that this is a little bit longer. Um, now that might be important. Depending on the size of the frame of your motorcycle, uh, a battery may either fit or not fit. Um, and because of that, you may choose to use Group 24s instead of Group 31s. Typically, a Group 31 battery is going to have a little bit better uh, capacity. It's going to be a little bit higher amp hour rating than a Group 24 because physically it's a little bit bigger. Now, this is a gel battery. A gel battery is not flooded. It doesn't have this loose electrolyte that can slosh around, nor do you need to ever add water to it. Because it's sealed, you can't get any distilled water in or out of here. Um, in certain occasions, you could vent uh, hydrogen gas from this, um, so you cannot mount this in a box that's all totally sealed up, but we're on a motorcycle, so that's not really an issue there either. Uh, for the terminals on this one, we have automotive posts here, and then closer to the middle, we have threaded posts. Now, what else is interesting here is that these posts are two different sizes. Uh, that's sometimes done so that you can't accidentally uh, put a battery cable on backwards, for example. Uh, another thing that I've done is color-coded my wrenches to match the positive and negative posts because they're two different sizes. So I put uh, red insulation on my 9 16 and black insulation on my half inch here. Uh, another thing to know about gels is they, they have to charge a little bit differently. If we look on the top, there's actually a note um, not to charge at over 14.1 volts. So whatever battery charger that you have, if you're using gels, make sure to, to observe that, otherwise you can severely shorten the life of your gel batteries. Uh, also on some battery chargers, they'll have a gel slash AGM uh, setting on that charger. Be real careful if you're using one of those. Uh, check the manual for the charger and see how many volts it actually puts out on that setting before using it. Uh, as you can see on the top here, there's uh, six ports that are basically uh, sealed vents, so um, we don't have to worry about adding water or anything coming out. Um, you can think of the inside of this battery as being like jello. It's just like gelatin, it's goo. Um, I've heard that if a person whacked one of these as hard as they could with a sledgehammer, essentially it's finger jello inside. Now this battery here is a Discover EGM. 
AGM stands for absorbed glass mat. Now instead of having jello inside or loose slosh around battery acid, the electrolyte is instead absorbed into a fiberglass mat. So inside this battery, nothing really moves around. Um, it's all very well sealed up, very well contained. But the advantage of an absorbed glass mat battery is that in general, you can pull a lot of amps out of them very quickly. Likewise, you can recharge them a little faster too because they can take a higher amperage rate while you're charging them. Uh, this one's uh, Discover. It's a British Columbian brand. It is manufactured in China. Um, but if we look up on the information on top here, this starts to give us some info that's more appropriate for an electric vehicle. Instead of just giving us a reserve capacity number, we're also seeing how many amp hours we can pull out of the battery at various rates. For example, it shows us at 25 amps, 56 amps, and 75 amps. And I know, for example, that on my motorcycle, when I'm zipping around, a lot of times I'm at 75 amps. So if I use that number here, it shows that I can have 63 amp hours on this battery at that kind of a discharge rate. Another neat piece of information we've got up here is the cold cranking amps. Now on here, it's 1100. That's double what we had on the flooded battery. This is an important thing to keep in mind because that means that a motorcycle running on these AGM batteries is going to have much better acceleration than a motorcycle running on those flooded batteries because you can pull more amps from the battery and put that amperage onto the road to pull away from traffic lights, uh, get out into traffic, and just have a lot more fun by being able to accelerate well. And this last type of battery I'm going to show you here is just called a sealed battery. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a battery that's sealed up, but it's not something as fancy as an AGM battery. Uh, you see these used a lot for uh, computer power backups, um, or otherwise like emergency lighting usually has a smaller battery, but it'd be of the sealed battery type. Uh, this one is made by CND Technologies. This is again a Milwaukee company. Um, what else is interesting is this one's designed as a high rate series battery. So some batteries really are specifically designed for either a lot of long but slow energy or being able to give you a really good burst of energy. Um, so you, you'll, you'll have to decide which you want in your vehicle. But again, being able to quickly pull quite a bit of amperage out of the battery is an advantage on an electric motorcycle. Also, this battery is the first one we've seen that has bolt-through terminals on it. So if we look up here, uh, it has a vertical hunk of lead with a hole in it, and what you do is you put a bolt straight through that, straight through the ring in your terminal into there, and what's nice is that you can get um, a lot of torque between your battery cable and this connector because it just sandwiches right in there. Whereas with those uh, threaded connectors, for example, if you tighten those down a whole lot, you can actually slowly pull that steel post up out of the, the lead. Um, so this is kind of a nice terminal in terms of being able to uh, really get good contact on there. Uh, again, just keep in mind, it is lead. So if you're handling batteries, especially the terminals, uh, wash your hands after using them and before you eat. And again, on our label, it's just going to give us some specs. This is a 75 amp hour battery, and it gives us some information about charging voltage as well. Also, lithium ion batteries. Again, uh, there's a lot of great information out there on the web. In this case, we wanted to stick with lead acid batteries. But let's take a look at the batteries that I decided to use in the motorcycle and why. So here's the batteries I chose for my motorcycle. These are Optima Yellow Tops. There's a couple of really neat features about these uh, right off the bat. You can probably see that one of them here is actually vertical. Uh, you definitely would not be able to do that with a flooded battery. These are spiral wound AGMs. So it's an absorbed glass mat battery, but instead of being rectangular with rectangular cells, it's more like a, like a six pack of beer. Um, each of the cell is uh, cylindrical. It's actually a rolled mat and that gives it this distinct uh, six-pack design to it. Uh, they're also very resistant to vibration so over time uh, shaking a battery can actually damage it and cause it to stop working. Uh, these are much more resistant to vibration than other types of batteries. Uh, the vertical 
uh, orientation here is kind of important because this particular motorcycle frame is a little on the small side. So to fit the batteries, the motor, the controller, and everything else in here without altering the frame, without doing any chopping, rewelding, extending, or anything like that, um, I was able to fit all four batteries real neatly inside the frame by having the two on the bottom vertical and the two on the top the traditional horizontal direction. Now also on here, um, I have the automotive posts, which on this battery you can see are on the side. And then it also has side posts. And because of how the battery is turned, those are actually on the front. Uh, this gives me the choice of using either and or both of those connections. For example, on the top, I'm using the automotive posts, but it's all covered by the tank. That way, um, all the terminals are, are away. They're protected. Uh, you can't get in there and touch them, anything like that. And then on the front, I've got the large battery boots going over the battery cables themselves and left the original caps on the automotive posts on the side. Now, if we look on the label, we've got 870 cranking amps. That's pretty good amperage. We're going to be able to uh, have very good acceleration on this motorcycle. Now, on the other hand, it's only 55 amp hour capacity. Uh, compare that to that flooded battery, which was only a little bit bigger, had 95 amp hour capacity. So in terms of range, these batteries are not going to be fantastic. Um, I can do a 20 to 30 mile range on these batteries. If I was using a flooded battery, I'd be able to have much better range, but I wouldn't have nearly as good acceleration. So it's kind of a trade-off, but I live uh, not very far outside of town, and I would much prefer the, uh, the good acceleration over any kind of additional range. Also, uh, these are sealed, maintenance-free batteries. You don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to add water. You don't have to uh, do any of that kind of work. Basically, you put them in there and you recharge them, and that's about all you ever have to do with them. Um, they are marked as non-spillable, um, and there's even a sticker on there that uh, is intentionally upside down to point out the fact that you can mount these different orientations. On the front here, I've got the rubber boots that cover up the side terminals. We'll pull one of those back so you can see what that side terminal looks like. The other disadvantage of these batteries is they're a little more pricey. These batteries I got at the Farman Fleet store. They're also available just off the shelf at uh, most auto parts stores. They're in the neighborhood of $200 each. Now those flooded batteries you can typically get for a little under $100 each. So these were more pricey but they're still not as expensive as lithium ion batteries. Now on the other hand, lithium batteries are going to be lighter weight and more compact. So the batteries that you choose for your project are going to depend on size, weight, budget, and whether you're looking for more of a, a, uh, a high energy battery or more of a high power battery. Now once you decide on what your batteries are going to be and how many of them, you're going to have to figure out how to mount those into your motorcycle.